they're back with a fan favorite. But is it better? Huh. Let's dig in, shall we? The Lian Li Land Cool 2. It's got great airflow, great aesthetics, numerous accessories, but only a 240 millimeter AIO up top, so the configurations were limited. Not to mention the whole idea of fans on the bottom, but not necessarily the design from an airflow perspective to make it work. They heard you, and voila, the Lian Li Land Cool 3, a case that is born to excel and give you a ton of configuration choices. The case comes in your usual two variants. Well, sort of usual two variants, but being that it's black or white, but you also have the Land Cool 3 and then the Land Cool 3 RGB. Why white is $10 more? Well, that's a question for them. Now, it really is a gorgeous case, both inside and out. Coming in at 526 millimeters deep, 238 millimeters wide, 523 millimeters tall, this puts the Land Cool 3 a tad bit bigger than the 5000D, which, to be honest, is a pretty big case. For motherboards, any board up to EATX with a width under 280 millimeters will fit in here with no issues. Any PSU up to 220 millimeters in length will pair nicely in here. For GPUs, pretty much any GPU will fit inside the Land Cool 3 as it supports up to 420 millimeters max for GPU length. Both tempered glass panels are magnetic like the Land Cool 2 and are held on by two hinges where the glass just slides up and off very easily to get inside of the case. Now the front of the Land Cool 3 has like two continuous aluminum strips on each side of the mesh front, giving the case a very futuristic look. Oh, and these strips double as the door handles for the tempered glass side panels as well. Hold on, we're just gonna take a second. Check this out. How far can it go? Oh boy. That's pretty rad. Sticking with the front panel, the mesh has a 51% porosity, aka air get through good. I love the simplification, air get through good, but teach me, sensei. Porosity or void fraction is the measure of void or empty space in any material and is a fraction of the volume of voids over the total volume between zero and one, or as a percentage in our case, between zero and 100%. With 51% porosity, that means that the case offers more dust filtration and airflow than ever before. Eat your heart out, Bill Nye the Science Guy. We learned today. Now the panel comes with your power button, it comes with a reset button, two USB 3.0 type A ports, one USB type C port, one audio jack, and the RGB model comes with a light color button to change the color and a light mode button to change the effect. Whew, so much buttons. Did you know it's movable? You can literally take it from the top to the bottom of the front panel. Storage is not going to be an issue in this case, especially if you have hard drives just filled with cat memes. Put them everywhere. Meow! Two two and a half inch SSD mounts behind the motherboard tray. You've got three two and a half inch SSDs behind the right flip panel. You also have four three and a half inch HDD slash two and a half inch SSDs in the hard drive cage underneath. And finally, you can put three more two and a half inch SSDs on top of the PSU chamber. So let's talk about fans and radiators. In the rear, you can do one 120 millimeter or one 140 millimeter fan. They kept the removable bracket option like the Land Cool 2, but just made it bigger. So the front now houses three 120 millimeter or three 140 millimeter fans. For front AIO cooling, you can fit anything up to a 360 millimeter AIO. Up top is the same configuration for fans. You can do three 120 millimeter or three 140 millimeter, but you can also go up to a 420 millimeter AIO up there. This case supports up to 185 millimeters in CPU cooler height. I have a Noctua NHU-12A. Will it fit? Absolutely, it's right there. Now the case does come with some fans and they are different for both the RGB and non-RGB. The fans included in both variants are no slouch and should produce great airflow. Just how great? Well, let's check out some jaw-dropping B-roll of the case and then get into the specifics, shall we?
So I gotta be honest, there isn't a whole lot to say about the build experience inside of the Lian Lee Land Cool 3, outside of it's absolutely a dream to build in. It's just so intuitive and the case just works. But there are a few things that are worth mentioning. They're minor, but it's good to make you aware of. First, the new cable management cover system on the back doesn't use screws anymore. You do need to do a better job of ensuring that you are cable managing because if you have too much bulge behind the glass, then those covers and the glass itself is not gonna stay closed. Now, another thing worth noting is that there's more visibility into the PSU shroud given the larger airflows, which is better for airflow, of course. But if you look down, you can actually see the cables, so you may wanna pay more attention to your cable management down in the bottom. You can, in fact, do a 420 millimeter AIO in this case, which is awesome, but with great power comes great care. I know that's not really how the catchphrase goes, but in this case, that's what I'm saying. You almost need to mount the AIO completely before putting any fans or in actually really removing all the fans to make sure you can maneuver it enough and finesse it enough to get it installed correctly. I'm never gonna fault a case for adding more functionality for cooling, especially as CPUs nowadays start to demand it. But just giving you a little tip to keep you from becoming overly frustrated if you install this and this and then you find out you have to remove it all to be able to put it on the AIO. But outside of that, this case is, it's very straightforward to build in. And using more common components like your ATX or 360 millimeter or AIO, you're gonna probably end up with a very by the book build experience. Every revision of a Lee and Lee case is worth testing because they listen to so much feedback. So we wanted to make sure we tested just how good temps could be in this case, using stock fans, of course. And of course that means we had to air cool. So for the CPU at idle, things looked idyllic, like Norschfenstein on a sunny day in the Bavarian Alps. The CPU in the open case is idle and sitting in a nice and frosty 26 degrees. And when we close things up, like how the PC is, like when it's just sitting on your desk, we saw things sitting at 28. Nothing too bad there. However, under load, it wasn't so idyllic. In the open case scenario, it was manageable with the CPU sitting at 82 degrees. But when we did close case, we saw things jump up to 92 degrees and we saw a bout or two of thermal throttling, which you can actually see highlighted in this ADA64 graph. Do I blame the case? No. You can do like what we did in our ultimate air-cooled build, which you can watch right here, and upgrade the fans to something with better CFM. Another option, and the one that we took, was undervolt the CPU, which reduces the heat, but also provides the same performance and is now a common practice on 12th gen CPUs. So what about the GPU then, Roby? How did that do? Okay, well, do you remember that idyllic scene we talked about with the beautiful castle on the lake? Well, for our GPU, the awesome EVGA RTX 3080 Ti, it was pretty much that scene through and through. At idle, we saw 41 in the open case, almost too cold to go swimming in the lake, and a two degree warmer 43 in the closed case. Under load, we saw things hit 80 degrees, which would feel great, and that's in the open case, and then a three degree warmer 83 in the closed case. Both great swimming temperatures and, you know, a lot like, you know, the Maldives. Now this is perfectly fine and right in line with a good air cooling case. Now remember, there are bottom fan mounts on the PSU shroud, and if you want to drop the temperature of the GPU and heck, probably improve the temperatures of the CPU, you could definitely mount things down below. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna see how the 12900K and the EVGA RTX 3080 Ti perform in games, stay tuned at the end of the video and we'll have those benchmarks for you. So wrap it up for me, Roby. Well, this is a tough one. I mean, there's nothing really dramatic to say. This case is great. The build experience is good. The flexibility in what you can install in the case is one of the best in the market right now. And the price is really good. And there is a potential to do amazing air-cooled, AIO liquid cool, or even custom liquid cooled builds inside of this case. I mean, 420 millimeter radiator at the top. But it's not about what I think, it's about what you think. What do you think of the Lee and Lee Land Cool 3 after this review? Tell us your thoughts on that and more and maybe even win a little cash in the process. First and foremost, you need to leave a quality comment down below along with liking and subscribing to the channel. Now, when I say quality comment, it doesn't need to be positive. It just needs to be something you liked or didn't like about the video, what surprised you, etc., about the build, the case, or the video, whatever. Just not, hey, I deserve to win. Can I have the case for free with all new components or something else similarly weird or lame? You also need to ensure we have a way to reach you via your YouTube profile, like your email. So put your email in your YouTube profile because we are gonna be giving away $25 to one lucky comment down below that is worldwide as long as you can accept PayPal or Venmo. But here's the deal, if you don't have your email in your YouTube profile, we can't tell you you won and therefore you can't win. So 
In the end, what did you think of the Lian Li Lanco 3? What did you think of the new features and upgrades? Are you a big fan of the door openers? Did you even know that they were there if you already had the case? What stood out the most about this case or this build? I would love to know all that and more down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robitech. Did you know we have a live stream channel for special builds and events? We will actually be building in this case live on that channel. So check out Robitech Live down in the description below so you can like and subscribe to know when we go live and you don't miss out when we have awesome builds like this. If you have questions about this case or any specific tech related questions, then check out our amazing Discord server at discord.gg slash Robitech filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas on these very subjects. Are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robitech.com or at Robitech Deals on Twitter. We have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things tech from PC components to TVs and even video games. Finally, you can follow me and my team absolutely everywhere on all the other socials at Robitech. We hope you enjoy this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.